Hi there, this is Danny Flexen. Welcome to this week's edition of Seconds Out Reflections, where we look back on the boxing action from the weekend just gone. The biggest shows this weekend, one just gone, were actually stateside. And we'll start in Arlington, Texas, uh, where hometowner Maurice Hooker um, was bidding to add the WBC super lightweight title to the WBO belt he already owned against Jose Ramirez of California. And unfortunately for the hometown hero, it didn't quite go his way. Um, but in what was one of 2019's best fights so far, I urge you all to watch it if you haven't already. I've seen it a couple of times. It's available on Sky Sports On Demand as far as I know. Um, so if you've got Sky and you're in the UK, go for it. I'm sure there's other ways to watch it. Um, it was on The Zone, of course, in the US. Great credit to Ramirez, first of all, um, for taking the fight on the way show, both geographically and promotionally. It was on a, an Eddie Hearn uh, Matchroom USA The Zone show. Um, but also for putting on the performance of his career when it mattered the most. Um, it was a real back and forth struggle, no doubt about that. Um, Hooker was harshly judged to have been knocked down in the first round when they came together and Ramirez stepped on his foot and Hooker stumbled down. That was an unfair knockdown, but he was up against it in the early rounds. But in rounds kind of three, four, five, Hooker started to find his rhythm. He was trying to fend off Ramirez early on. Ramirez threw punches in bunches, was trying to crowd Hooker constantly to the ropes and into the corners. But Hooker eventually got his jab going, doubling it up as well, and started to turn Ramirez quite a lot when he was forced him to overreach, turned him, landed some sharp counters, especially with the long right hand. Hooker, of course, has that freakish 80-inch reach for a super lightweight, which is particularly advantageous. Ramirez, though, was never dissuaded, um, and end of round five, and came into the start of round six looking confident in what had been a really entertaining fight to that point. I think we were all hoping it would go the 12-round distance just so we could see more of it. Then it got to round six, Ramirez landed a picture-perfect left hook that forced, uh, that forced uh, Hooker back to the ropes, stumbled, still kind of had his senses about him, but clearly rocked by the shot and open to follow-ups. Ramirez didn't need a second invitation. He charged in, and his punch selection and finishing instincts were both superb. He landed shots to head and body. Now, I've seen a lot of people criticise referee Mark Nelson for jumping in a little bit too late, including Andre Ward. A huge respect for Andre Ward, of course, and everything he achieved. But I don't quite agree with him on this one. I think, although in, in slow motion, it looked like um, Hooker was allowed to take too many clean shots to the head. I think if you think about it in real time, the gap between when Ramirez began up unloading against the ropes to when Hooker was um, clearly gone and Mark Nelson jumped in, it's a very short amount of time. You know, Give Ramirez credit for unloading a brutal barrage of shots in such a short space of time and, and getting the job done. I don't think Nelson could have jumped in much quicker than he did. It was just in real time, it was a lot quicker than it looked on a second viewing later on. With all due respect, Andre, of course. Um, also on that show, we saw uh, Tevin Farmer retain his IBF Super Featherweight title. Again, he's been really busy this year. He widely outpointed Guillaume Frenoir. I saw um, his promoter, Lou DiBella, Farmer's promoter, was quoted as saying he would have a word with Farmer because there was some booing in the crowd. He wants him to be more entertaining. To which Farmer quickly shot back, by more entertaining, do you mean get involved in more wars, take more shots, risk more brain damage, or something along those lines, I'm paraphrasing. Um, and he got a lot of support for that reply, and I, I completely agree with him. If you can win fights clearly, retain your title, and give yourself the least risk to your health possible, fair play to him. He's making money, he's winning fights, and he's not getting hurt. I'm not sure how that can be criticised. It might not be what the fans love, but hey, the main event was brilliant, so you can't have everything. Going back to Ramirez, one thing I would like to point out is that Eddie Hearn and DAZN worked with Top Rank, who promote Ramirez for this fight, and it was allowed to be on a DAZN show because it worked out best for both fighters, the money was good for both of them. So it just shows that these rival promotional entities can work together when it really matters to deliver the biggest fights. Um, Ramirez deserves great credit for stepping up on an away show and getting the job done, and now we hope that he will end up fighting the mouthwatering climax of the World Boxing Super Series Super Lightweight Tournament, which is really hard to say, and I'm really proud of myself for managing it. Um, Josh Taylor gets Regis Pro Grace hold the other between them the other two major titles in the division and the winner of that tournament will have two belts Ramirez now has two belts we could see um, not too long after Terence Crawford did it within a year from now one person holding all four major belts and become the undisputed £140 champion which would be great but going from someone in Ramirez who has stepped up despite promotional obstacles and broadcaster based obstacles we go to someone who we want to step up or at least I do and that's Javonte Davis, the super WBA super featherweight champion, doing it with the tongue twisters this week. 
Um, defended his title once again. Um, second round blast out of mandatory challenger Ricardo Nunes in Baltimore. The first time that Davis had fought in his home uh, town for, well, I'm not sure how many years, but it was his fourth pro fight the last time he was there. Delighted the home fans with a great win. Showed his explosivity, his speed, everything we like about Davis. But it now looks like he's going to be fighting uh, Yuri Orkis Gamboa, who's a fast, skillful Cuban, very talented. Um, one on the undercard blasted out the remains or the faded ghost, if you like, whatever you want to call it, of Roman Martinez. And he's earned his shot, Gamboa. He's on a good run, four wins in a row against good opposition. But it's just not what we want to see. I've got to be honest, Gamboa, he's had his defensive frailties exposed in the past, not just by a superb fighter in Terence Crawford, but by lesser lights as well. And I wrote an article about this, which you can read now, cheap plug alert, on secondsout.com, that Gamboa is the guy we're probably going to see Davis against next. But who we really want to see him against next is either Farmer, because the two have been trading social media barbs for some time, rival champions, it's a natural fight, or Miguel Bichelt, the WBC champion, who's on a great run of form. He hasn't lost since 2014. That's his only setback. Been beating up good opposition, stopping people. He's a blistering, ferocious fighter. His style would mesh really well with Davis's slick skills and explosivity. And I really think, if Floyd Mayweather was a southpaw, as my caveat, I really think this could be this generation's Mayweather against Jose Luis Castillo. It could be just as entertaining and just as close, if it ever happens. But of course, uh, like Ramirez, Bichelt is with top rank. Uh, Davis is a PBC fighter. It's going to be hard to make that happen. But if the fighters really want it, as Ramirez and Hook approved, those promotional and TV obstacles can be overcome. They can be surmounted. So I'd really, really like to see that happen. Now, what I want to hear from you in the comments below is what was your performance of the weekend? Could be Davis. Could be Farmer even. That'd be a bit of a left field one, but I'd like to hear it if you think so. Um, or it could be Ramirez, of course, who had the stiffest opposition to overcome. Let us know what you think and also what you think about Javante Davis's next fight, who it should be against, and if those obstacles I talked about can indeed be surmounted. Let us know and we'll reply to some of the best ones. I'll be back next week for the next Reflections, Monday 4.30pm, or I'll be here on Thursday for Flexpectations, looking ahead to this week's action, Thursday 4.30pm, and I'll see you then. Thanks as always for your time. Cheers.